It's a single African market program. It is the continent's number one and the most reliable media platform regarding the journey of the continent of Africa to integrate its market. And this week, we're going to take a look at the relationship that exists between the regional economic communities as well as the AFCFTA. We will dwell particularly on ECOWAS uh, and take a look at how the ECOWAS trade liberalization scheme, that's the ETLS, is faring and to what extent it has impact on the AFCFTA. So we've had loads of concerns regarding uh, some challenges uh, that are bedeviling the ETLS. We want to ask how far can that affect the implementation of the AFCFTA will be engaging the borderless alliance for their perspective. Meanwhile, the Africa Union Development Agency, the AUDA NEPAD, uh, as well as the Ghana National Office of the AFCFTA, uh, have held their first meeting on the Center of Excellence that's supposed to take a look at innovation and science and all of that uh, to see how best we can boost the manufacturing sector of Africa's economy uh, and all of that to ensure that we take proper advantage of the trade and the AFCFTA that we are looking for. The African Union Development Agency, NEPAD, AUDA NEPAD, has co-convened the first technical expert meeting on the AUDA NEPAD Center of Excellence Supply Chain and Logistics with the Ghana AFCFTA National Office in Accra. The Center of Excellence is part of a network of five centers that have been established by the AUDA NEPAD as part of the structure of the agency to drive knowledge capitalization for development solutions. These include energy and climate resilience, human capital and institutions development, science, technology and innovation, and rural resources and food system. It is significant that AUDA is spearheading the setting up of a center of excellence in supply chain and logistics as part of its mandate to facilitate the development of key capacities in member states. One of the key flagships of the Agenda 2023 is the establishment of the AFCFTA with a strong emphasis on rapid manufacturing and industrialization for Africa to fully benefit from its own mineral resources. Inclusively hosted in the five regions of the African Union, coordinator of the Ghana National AFCFTA office, Dr. Farid Arthur, highlighted that the AU's Agenda 2063 is key on the AFCFTA with strong emphasis on rapid industrialization and manufacturing for Africa to benefit from its own mineral resources. At the Ghana National Office, we embrace the opportunity to continue working with AUDA as the technical agency of the union towards realizing a dynamic and responsive AFCFTA that is global, competitive, to deliver. According to Dr. Farid Arthur, the AFCFTA recognizes supply chain logistics as a key driver for trade and with the global supply chain disruptions and with a strategic view towards the AFCFTA, there is a demand on African countries to invest more to improve manufacturing capacity through regional and national industrial development strategies. For us, we see the issue of supply chain and logistics as one of the key drivers for the successful implementation of the AFCFT. The incoming first African global president of the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport, Chief Tite Owusu Norte, emphasized that businesses and the private sector has a greater role to play in the economy of Africa and therefore require the needed stimulus. He urged that much attention is paid to supply chain infrastructure. The role of the business to private sector in supply chain and logistic development cannot be overstated. As without private sector injection, the processing, movement, storage, etc. of those is severely constrained. Indeed, the government is a huge investor in infrastructure for the movement of goods, but with their predominant limit, uh, limited public revenues and state continue to feel the strain, private sector investments require much bigger stimulus. This takes into account in particular the potential benefits to be derived from the AFC FTA. The president-elect of Silt International, 
charged the African Union to resuscitate the former NEPAD Foundation in all the five AU regions. African investments in both value and supply chains are critical, and we therefore need to empower our small, medium, and large-scale enter enterprises to rise to the occasion and be counted. Effort to mitigate social and economic impact of the COVID-19 was a clear demonstration of the potential that African countries have to, from, have to benefit from innovation partnership. I therefore call on all to open to strategic collaborations to enable us as Africans to build synergy and take on the opportunity that AFTA presents. So that's the Auda NEPAD as well as the uh, Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport and the Ghana National Office of the AFCFTA uh, Coordination Office here in Ghana uh, having their first meeting on the Center of Excellence, the Auda NEPAD Center of Excellence. And we believe that all these talks bring together to ensure that we get somewhere as far as this dream and vision of the continent of Africa integrating its market is concerned. Uh, in the meantime, we have heard quite a number of concerns regarding the ECOWAS trade liberalization schemes. Now, some of them, when you hear them, you even begin to fear if the AFCFTA can work. Because if even in West Africa, from Ghana to Togo, Ghana to Nigeria, Ghana to Ouagadougou, Ghana to Abidjan, moving goods on the corridor have these challenges with a lot of allegations on corruption uh, and harassment on our corridor and all of that. What about when you have to move your goods from Ghana or Accra or Tema uh, to, let's say, Cameroon, for instance, or to Gambia or to Zambia? So if within the regions we're having problems, can we do the continent? We engaged the Borderless Alliance for some perspectives. Listen. <laughs> If you can share with us the, some of the assessments and your observation uh, on the continent of Africa and probably in particular the ECOWAS region, uh, what are some of your assessments when it comes to our readiness to trade among ourselves? Let me emphasize more on uh, West Africa. In West Africa, we still have a long way to go. You know, if, uh, since even trading among ourselves, we still have... Uh, some challenges, uh, tariff and non-tariff barriers uh, on most of the corridors, not only on the Abidjan Lagos corridor, well, but we are emphasizing the uh, the Abidjan Lagos corridor because it's the most important corridor. You know, bearing almost seventy percent of the uh, trade flow uh, in the region. Um, we think definitely that if uh, the region must trade. Uh, properly with uh, the rest of the continent, uh, we should start working seriously on some of these challenges uh, regarding uh, uh, trade, uh, let's say uh, tariffs, a uh, barrier, and also non-tariff barriers. If it is not easy to you know to uh, to carry goods from Abidjan to Lagos in in three days, as uh, people mentioned to right now. I don't know how can we, it will be easy, for example, uh, to produce in Cote d'Ivoire or in Ghana or Nigeria and transport these goods to East Africa or Southern Africa. If the same trade barriers, uh, uh, non-tariff barriers and tariff barriers uh, do exist in this part of the, reg the region too. So uh, that's why I think that uh, definitely we have to, to work hard actually uh, to create this trust uh, among ourselves to make sure that ECOWAS protocols are duly implemented by member states and then also to try to to improve our production capacity in most of the the, 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 the in most of the countries uh, people are just producing for local consumption mm. yeah, and we have an African market open uh, 1.2 billion uh, consumers that uh, the market may be open, but the capacity of the countries to produce, mm -hmm. to satisfy the need of this market is something else. Yeah. So, which means that actually, beside uh, uh, these uh, trade barriers, uh, governments need absolutely to work 
in improving and increasing production, the production capacity uh, in the in, in the region. Otherwise, the continent may be demanding more than exactly. the people can supply. Yeah, the, 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 the continent may be demanding more, and the the the, the, people, the countries won't be able to to, to supply. And unfortunately, uh, if the the demand is there. It means, and we cannot, uh, you know, supply this demand. It means that p probably people will be tempted to to import from outside the continent, uh, you know, Asia or Europe or US, because the need is there. But why do you think that it is? That we still have some of these non-tariff barriers existing on our routes when it has been drummed severally among countries almost all the countries along the corridors are aware that we need to move away from these impediments otherwise we can't treat why do we still have them on there i think that there are two main reasons let's take things at the national level uh unfortunately so far our government uh raise money on custom duties mm. this is the most essential you know beside maybe nigeria uh, most of our government uh, the, 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 in the region is uh, the custom duties who are the main source of revenue for the, the, the duties the, on import and export on import and export uh, the, the main the source of revenue for the for the countries and uh, some countries sees etls as a way to prevent them to mobilize these resources yeah you know you see and uh, that's the reason why you know in a certain way uh, some of these countries that doesn't want to comply with ETLS regulations and the the other issue regarding ETLS uh, is that uh, this mistrust between member states uh, you know country A uh, doesn't is not so sure that uh, country B the, pro the product that country B is bringing to the country is really produce, produce in the country we, which means that actually we need uh, definitely to to, to, to to build this trust between uh, countries to make sure that uh, our produ produ production our production is really locally product, uh, produce goods uh, so that uh, if it is really locally produced goods it means that uh, they are entitled to 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 be admitted under ETLS ETLS regulations the second aspect of the thing is uh, unfortunately is individuals uh, working talking about corruption you know at the, on the corridors at the borders uh, we have all these uniform forces you know uh, at these borders unfortunately who are playing the ignorance of the traders and the ignorance of the people you know, to collect money from them uh, and this is real yeah. on and the this ground is, no definitely this is real when, and you, 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 when for example uh, you cross the border people will just uh, give me 1000 to just to stamp your passport uh, or give me uh, one uh, 10 cities just to stamp the, your passport and they don't want to give you a receipt for example give me a receipt at least uh, to justify uh, once back home that i pay 10 cities or i pay 1000 they they won't say it. no because well, it's not a legitimate yeah, me yeah, yeah. fees they are charging but uh, but, but uh, in nigeria they, when they say you respect yourself it means that actually you have to do something even in ghana here uh, when the uniform force a policeman you custom say that uh, since this morning he didn't take his tea it means it's a way to ask you something in Cote d'Ivoire when they say you should speak good french parler bon français it what it means something you know uh, so it means that speak that, yeah. good French. Yeah, it means that do no, something. Should, yeah. Part should, away with the yeah. money. It's part of way to say that you have to pay to pay something to them. And most of the time, they don't really insist insist if they know that you know your rights. Yeah. That's why I say that it's kind of uh, you know taking advantage of, of the, the ignorance. ignorance, knowing that you know most of our traders on the different creators is small scale the traders and when you are outside your country as we say in french you are losing your latin it means that actually you are no longer confident in you so whatever people will ask you to do you are ready to do it yeah and then for them paying uh, something to police to custom to the gendarmerie becomes something normal so that when people start their journey they have, uh, you know, uh, they evaluate what they are going to spend. 
on, on the road, yeah. but also uh, what they are going to give uh, to the uniform forces is part of the... Uh, but unfortunately, uh, someone, one of them told me, whatever you pay on the road, it's not, you are not losing as a trader. No, you pass it, it on yeah, to the cons consumer. The consumer. And today we are complaining about uh, the, the cost of living, yeah. high cost of goods, etc., etc. Knowing that, unfortunately, it's these malpractices that in a certain way, uh, you know, increase, uh, bring this problem. The living That's standards reason, yeah. we have. Yeah. That's the reason why we say that uh, definitely I think that uh, the government should, you know, uh, be firm and more committed to fight corruption, harassment on the road, uh, at least to avoid uh, this situation to our, to our people. And that's why people are also worried that if we have ETLS, and in spite of ETLS, we still have all these difficulties and impediments, uh, these harassments and corruption on our corridors and all of that. What would change if we have AFCFTA? If I was moving goods from Ghana to Togo and I was facing this problem, or Ghana to Waga and I was facing this problem, what would change if I have to move the same goods from Ghana uh, to Cameroon or from Ghana to Gambia, for instance? No, exactly. Actually, there's no, there's no. Nothing will change. Nothing will change. So will AFCFTA I, work then? If ETLS doesn't work, I cannot see how AFCFTA can work. That's the problem. Because it, it's, it's also a protocol like ETLS. And if people don't comply, government don't comply with the term of this protocol, and people in their attitude don't comply with the term of free movement of people, actually, I don't see how uh, AFCTA can work if ETLS doesn't work. And that's what, you know, most of the time when uh, we are discussing with the private sector, people will say, okay, you are not able actually to make things work in West Africa. Now you are opening a continental market. If, you know, Eddie, imagine that in East Africa, uniform forces have the same attitude as our uh, West uniform Africa. forces here. So there is no need actually to, to take all these risks no, to open up your market. Open up, open up. Let's continue fighting with your... Is uh, ETLS uh, working? Yes, it works. It works. And uh, we have some challenges. I agree that we have some challenges, but it works. It works. So and again, again, uh, some countries are really taking, not advantage, benefiting from ETLS. Okay. How? Those who have a kind of industrial background who produce a lot of industrial uh, goods, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, uh, Nigeria now, because actually since the oil crisis, now they are trying to improve their, um, their indus uh, industrial uh, manufacturing yeah. uh, sector. W once you uh, have a manufacturing uh, sector, well structured, uh, you produce goods, and these goods are eligible to ATLS. There's no reason for you not to trade freely as recommended by uh, the, the, the uh, ETLS uh, protocols. So it works, but we still have some problems. So let's have the, this uh, honesty from time to time, as someone told us in Abuja, uh, that regulations uh, can be reevaluated the same way it's evaluated. So if we sit down, evaluate our ETLS, if there is uh, areas to improve, let's improve it. If there are some, you know, uh, uh, decision, good decision to take to improve it, let's take it uh, to make uh, the, the, the instrument uh, work. Because uh, I'm quite sure that uh, we will still even with uh, AFCFTA, we will still using uh, ETLS, uh, ETLS, the, ETLS. The, regional yeah, the regional protocols. Uh, the regional protocols. The reason is simple. You know, a country, a company A, may be enough big to, to, take, to go yeah, all the way to yeah, the continental to see, market. Yeah, but you see that actually West Africa is a small market for me. I need a larger market. 
So going to East Africa or to Southern Africa or to where, or Northern Africa, I can do it. So this company have the possibility to, you know, to explore these avenues in, in, on, on the continent. But we will see some SMEs. Uh, maybe the national market is enough for me. Or maybe the regional market is enough for me. If the regional, regional market is in, let me comply with the ATLS regulation to make sure that I'm still trading freely my goods within uh, the 15 uh, ECOWAS uh, member states. Okay. What, what, which areas of ETLS do you think needs to be looked at immediately if we can, if we can build on it okay. and leverage on after? I think that uh, one thing, and ECOWAS, I'm quite sure is ECOWAS is working on it, is how to build tr trust among member states. And the main tool is the certificate of origin to make sure that the certificate of origin is not given to a company because it is a company of my country. I want my country, my com the company of my country to, to export, but also based on faith and to make sure that actually uh, this company uh, complies indeed with ATLS regulation. So uh, we have to continue to start on, oh no, not to continue working on the certificate of origin, harmonize the way the certificate of origin is issued to make sure that if uh, this, this certificate of origin is issued in country A, it won't be uh, rejected in country B. There are some concerns that have been raised, particularly even about uh, goods the goods that are moving to the transit countries in terms of their monitoring, in terms of their, of their protection and all of that. Why do we still have this difficulty of ensuring that goods that are supposed to move from one country to the other stay secured all the way to the end? Aren't we tracking enough? Can we be able to track our goods or cargo that move from one country mm -hmm. into the other? Yeah, the, uh uh, definitely, uh, it's part of the problem. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, a regional tracking system. So uh, what we have now is that uh, each country has its own uh, uh, tracking, tracking devices system, and devices. systems. Ghana has, uh, it was... Uh, it used uh, to be GCNet, uh, now ICOMS. ICOMS. Uh, Burkina is uh, Kotrak, uh, man, man by Kotekna. Uh, Cote d'Ivoire is Sky, Sky, uh, Sky View. Uh, it's uh, managed by the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, you go to Mali's Ebimi, which means in uh, where are you uh, in Bambara, uh, Ebimi. It's managed by uh, the uh, Mali Chamber uh, 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 oh, Shippers Council. So we all have, uh, each country has its own Different tracking different, systems. Different, 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 different devices. What Borderless Alliance was advocating for, if we are not able to have a regional uh, mm, tracking system, which has been the, 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 the best way, why not, for example, work to make sure that the devices, the different systems are communicating uh, with each other? So that, for example, when the truck a device is put on the port of Tema, this device can go up, not be removed at uh, Paga, as now it is, the, 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 but it can cross the border and go up to the to Wagadugu with the same device. Yeah, which means that actually this truck will be followed from uh, by the customs in in Ghana. All the, way to the, all, to the all, all the way to Togo. All the way to Togo. To Burkina, uh, and also with the you know, in conjunction with the uh, Burkina custom. Since they are, uh, you know, the tracking system was established first uh, by the customs, uh, actually to avoid uh, that uh, goods actually uh, diversion of goods uh, on uh, supposed to be on transit, but uh, unfortunately we find the same goods in, in, in the country. So uh, this is something that actually we can imagine. And unfortunately, so far, 
uh, it didn't it didn't work. Uh, this uh, co kind of uh, communication, so that so that uh, uh, today you have a device uh, set on a truck uh, in Tema. Uh, once in Paga, uh, the, this device is removed. First of all, you are taking time to remove the device, and uh, the time to bring the device back to Tema, and also when the truck pass uh, pass the border. You will see so many trucks. They are waiting for the devices. This is what they are saying. Uh, it will be one of these days a, realist, a reality, uh, knowing that uh, rail transportation is more efficient. You can carry more goods. Uh, it's cheaper. And definitely, we have never seen you know, a police officer uh, in the bush uh, just standing and ask a, a train to stop and to pay uh, uh, bribes. Yeah. So, so at least we know that actually uh, these uh, tariff, non-tariff barriers, actually we can uh, get rid of them if we have we succeeded in developing uh, this rail uh, transportation. Uh, the same way, unfortunately, um, air cargo is uh, quite expensive. Uh, in our, for our region, even for passengers, it's so expensive. So that, but uh, anyway, we can still, you know, continue exploring uh, this opportunity. Do, do you think that the continent is ready to trade beyond what we are already doing? Uh, is, is there something new that you think AFCFTA will bring to the fore from borderless perspective? I think so. I think so that... Uh, what would this be? If we have raw materials, and unfortunately, so far, we are just exporting the raw materials without transformation. Beyond the continent. Beyond the continent, without transformation, without, without, without added value, value. Without added value. Without job creation. Without wealth creation. Let's imagine, for example, if we decided to bring this value addition to our raw materials. I was taking the, just the example of cotton. We decided, okay... Uh, but Burkina Faso is produ producing a, a lot of cotton, but this cotton is just exported to Europe, to uh, Asia. They will transform it and send it back to us. But we may decide that, okay, uh, this country A is producing cotton. Country B has a technology and also the utilities, water, electricity, to transform this cotton so that at least we add value to it, but also we transform it to it, we create, we create jobs for our people, etc., etc. In this condition, uh, people may want from outside the continent to come and invest in our countries because there is a possibility now of transforming what we have. I've seen, for example, uh, lately, I don't want to, uh, two weeks ago, not even two weeks ago, uh, the president of Guinea asked uh, his, uh, uh, the bauxite producer exporters in Guinea that they have to transform the bauxite in Guinea. Well, this is a tough yeah. uh, project. But uh, they, they may, it is politically correct, but technically, is it correct? I'm not so sure. Because I know this country, in terms of uh, availability of energy, you know, electricity is that. But if, you know, we succeeded in developing what we can call regional value chains, so that country A, country B, and country C may come together producing, transforming minimally, and the other one transforming totally, and now exporting within the region, but exporting in the continent. This is something that actually we can, you know, we can start uh, thinking of. But it means that actually we don't, uh, as uh, countries, don't, we shouldn't, see things that we want to transform everything everything knowing that we are so uh, producing the same thing i can when i was the mdo the burkina sport promotion council uh we organized a 
affair in uh, Ouagadougou, and we have our friends from the uh, from uh, Ghana who attended the fair, and we had a meeting, a joint meeting between uh, exporter, mango exporters, Ghanaian mango exporters, and Burkina mango exporters. This came a very good idea that mangoes are in Burkina Faso. We export mangoes on three months. Ghana says so. We are also exporting mangoes on three months. Why do we associate to make sure that our customer in Europe will have mangoes on six months so that you, Burkina, you start in March, ending in May, in June, knowing when the rain starts, we have the, uh, the flyers. Yeah. That, uh, so, so you start until June, we serve the same customer. So when you can no longer export, uh, Ghana will take over, over from there uh, from there for also for three or four months. We were not able to conclude. And these are things that I think we should we have be to able revisit. to We have to revisit and to make sure that taking a, a countries a, individually alone, we can never achieve something. But we have to, to collaborate. And also, if there is something to share, we share it among ourselves instead of, you know, I want to, I want to as, as an individual. Well, as individual countries. Now, yeah. well, one of the things that we have also been accused of, and as we are ending, I would want to take your perspective uh, from, from the borderless perspective, uh, is the fact that we are not able to record the trade that we engage in on the continent. Yeah. And, and so we don't even have proper records. We say we are doing 15% intra-Africa trade, 16%. Meanwhile, on the ground, goods are moving. And they Absolutely. may be moving more than the percentage Absolutely. that we are recording. Absolutely. Now that we are starting a AFC, EFTA, yeah. to be able to put records, proper records in place, how do we gather records of the trade we engage in as a continent? And what would be borderless advice? Yeah, I think I think that the, it, to, it is one of the uh, one of the reason uh, you know uh, we are talking about ETLS. Uh, some of the reason why ETLS were facing uh, some challenges and creating this mistrust among uh, countries because of the lack of these uh, statistics. Uh, when uh, country A, nobody knows about your capacity of producing, uh, let's say, oil, and suddenly you start exporting oil, it's, it's normal that people start questioning where is this oil coming from, you see? And that's one of the issues that was raised even lately when uh, the ATLA task force uh, visited the five countries on the abidjan Lagos corridor. And the recommendation is that let's have proper statistics on our capacity of producing things. If you know, for example, that the, in country A, there is a, a factory producing such goods, let's make sure that we know the tonnage that this country, that this factory is producing. How do and we get all yeah, of that? Yeah. All we do, that's what we have to collaborate with. Uh, the private sector, those who are producing. You mean the but countries have yeah, to collaborate yeah, with? Yeah, with the private sector. But also to make sure that actually to have rules to comply the private sector to communicate their statistics to whoever in the country is the authority in gathering all these information. I know that uh, every country here, they have this authority. Uh, in Burkina, we have uh, an institute in charge of statistics. They are the one producing officially the statistic and proposing to the government. The government valid, uh, can validate it, and then they start uh, not communicating these statistics. And these, this institute, they gather the statistics from customs. Customs are the one, actually, who knows who is coming in, who is going out. But unfortunately, yeah. sometimes and unfortunately, customs, customs is not interested in recording exactly. the, particularly the informal ETLS, trade. Yeah, the, 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 even the ETLS, the ETLS approved goods. Yes, they, they don't, don't record them no, because yeah, there's no they, there duty no on them. To collect on it. So for them, it's hard work for nothing. While statistics 
is it the necessary tool, essential tool for decision? Which means that actually we have to reinforce our, the way we collect the statistics. And again, if we have these statistics, when we know that this country is able to produce such quantity of cotton, such quantity of, it can help other countries to make plans. To see how can we absorb, absorb part of this quantity that we will inject in our manufacturing sector or that we can. Uh, 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 so this is necessarily the, our recommendations uh, to ask member states of ECOWAS mostly member states to reinforce the, you know, the statist statistical uh, data you know, and data records and that they report. get. Again, so to make sure that uh, we have information that we they can share with other countries uh, and uh, with the continent. Finally, and I noticed that you, borderless, you've been very thick in affairs of the ETLS task force uh, that is supposed to ensure that some of the concerns that have been raised by the economic operators from Benin uh, is properly resolved. So uh, you, together with the, the chairman, which is uh, uh, His Excellency Ibn Chambers, led a team. You were here in Ghana. You've been to about five countries so far, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, so far, how, how has it been? How successful has yeah, it been? Yeah, after Ghana, we visited Ab uh, Abuja, then uh, Cotonou. And in a sec on a second mission, we, we went to Abidjan and then uh, Lomé actually to make sure that the five countries of the Abidjan Lagos corridor uh, are covered. Okay. Uh, during this meeting, as you, you were in Accra, we had the opportunity to mostly to discuss uh, with the private sector who, who is involved in the, in the, in the, the trading. trading. Uh, and they also, uh, to, 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 as the President Chambers, were, we, we came uh, in a listening mode you know, yeah. to listen to the, uh, the challenges and now see what can we do. I, th I think that things went well, and uh, uh, we had uh, very good meetings uh, on in all these uh, with the high level uh, uh, authorities. Uh, we came up with a report and uh, recommendations, and I think definitely uh, uh, we will manage to submit this report to ECOWAS Commission and see how can I know prepare a uh, high level meeting uh, among the five countries I, among the five countries to make sure that uh, issues that are raised if yes uh, how can we address them properly did you see some readiness on the part of all Definitely the countries all the countries they are ready including for benin they, itself they are ready for that they are ready for that uh, again uh, if we succeeded in bringing together all these people to make sure that uh, uh, some of the issues that are raised and if there are recommendations and resolutions uh, from the five countries, now to make sure that everybody will go back and with its own uh, administration to make sure that the recommendation or resolution are properly implemented. This is the only way. And uh, again, uh, some of the issues that were raised, uh, again, is the mistrust uh, among countries is also the information related to the data on capacity production of the countries. So let's make sure that all these uh, to, to, you know, to, 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 to find solutions to all these issues and make sure that uh, uh, ETLS will no longer face uh, challenges on you. We, we still continue having challenges, but not transit uh, issues. Uh, uh, later on, as we mentioned, we may come back later on try to revise and try to how to harmonize things how to how to how to how to but not uh, transit issues yeah. because uh, even uh, international regulations you know uh, prevent from paying duties on products when they are on uh, on transit but probably it's because uh, mr a is not sure that the project is really transiting through his country. Uh, that's the reason why uh, he want to. Okay, uh, let's uh, you pay 
uh, the duty so that even if you the product that we see a diversion we don't care uh, you have already we have already collected our duties what is borderless expecting from the continent as we commence officially um, commercially meaningful trading on the continent yeah i think that this is a very good opportunity actually to um in terms of to increase uh you know to expand let's say the size of our companies by giving them the opportunity instead of being regional to go continental yeah but as i said let's try to address these issues that we are facing now at the regional le level that can prevent us to go continental so that's uh, uh, what we borderless alliance will continue working on as we say in our motto remove barriers to trade so undoubtedly we've got a lot to do to put our ass together in order to benefit from this continental agenda uh, called the AFCFTA because if we're not getting it right at the regional level, either the ECOWAS level or the SADC level or the ECA, the ECA level or UEMOA, we cannot do it together if we are not succeeding at the various uh, regions there. So it's important that we take some of these opinions coming from uh, those who are very familiar with the corridors and know uh, the problems and the challenges that are confronting the regional protocols, the better that we learn from it and also be able to uh, correct ourselves in the implementation processes of the AFC EFTA. We will continue to bring you perspectives of this nature uh, as we all learn along and be able to take proper advantage of the AFC EFTA. And those of us on the single African market, we have made it a point to be highlighting achievements of young people, young people who are doing things by themselves, particularly in the area of innovations. They are doing, creating things, and they desire to take them beyond the shores of their country here for now, which is Ghana, uh, to the rest of the continent. Now, this week, we are focusing on a young man, a young artist who is designing a lot of stuff. My name is Lucky Brahma. Actually, this work is God gift. The work is feeding me and my son and my daughter. I want to train boys. I don't want this work. When I'm no more, this work will be in vain. I want to train them for boys to get benefit for me. I want to send this group for outsiders to also see for different, different countries. Because all, most of my customers, outsiders, American, London, all those people, they came to me, they say I have a good quality art. They want me to send this goods out, but I don't have that, have that uh, helper or that capacity yet. So I have that vision to go to Abidjan to carry my goods there. Because I went to do contract there, I come back. So I wanted to send the goods to Abidjan, uh, like Cameroon, all those things. So what an uh, Africa leader they are bringing for after also, so I think it will help us. It remove many things for barrier for us. The duty we supposed to pay, we don't have the capacity to pay those duties. So we thank God they are planning this uh, uh, movement for us. So when I am able to travel like that to go and sell my product, I can able to employ more boys. To get boys, I can put on training so that I also be helping our boys. We thank Africa leaders that are bringing the uh, after to us to help us. The duty we cannot pay. That's why our work is stranded. So right now, as Af Africa leader that bring this uh, after to us. So right now, if I can able to go and sell and come back, I can able to get money to feed my boys. I employ more boys so that I can able to also get more hand to produce lots to send outside the gate. So to come and help our country. As you can see, this coat of arm, Ghana coat of arm. So this also sink. This guiding chair, this giraffe sitting giraffe, this kitchen cabinet, and also this puppet. This is a lady sitting down. It's a chair. This is a table for, for porch. You can use it for room. This is also center table. Uh, someone of order this gone. If after can help us like this, I will have a more material to produce for them. We can go and sell for outside the country so that we can benefit the children, let the be children to benefit for us. This Africa, this uh, eagle, this is a different kind of art. 
giraffe and uh, you know and uh, chicken so if as you see that coat of arm i can do nigeria coat of arm south africa any country coat of arm you know so for what after do for us so it will expose my brain to create more things i create anything you want anything you think about i can bring it out for you the africa government what they did for the youth for bringing after to us we bless god for them their life and uh, let this thing come and speed up for us so that we can also expand and make the youth enjoy for our hand so that we can also train their well so after what is bringing to us as we remove the barrier for us as after he's bringing this to us we bless them bless the africa union that's a very solid uh, artist, a young man there who is making it uh, big time, surviving on his art. Now coming up next are uh, the schedules of uh, flights from the commercial capital of Africa, that's Accra, Ghana. Also the weather report for all African cities and the forex rate for the African market as well as the uh, status of the AFCFTA party states. So we thank you for watching the program and we will continue to urge you to tag along in order to learn how far we have come and where we are heading regarding the journey of Africa to integrate its economy. See you same time next week.